El Salvador just made Bitcoin legal tender in the country, meaning that it has effectively accepted it as national currency. To be clear, this is completely unprecedented, but what does this actually mean? What sort of effects can we expect nationwide and are they gonna be positive or negative? With cryptocurrency still in its relative infancy, there are tons of questions, but never fear, there are still plenty of answers here at Technop. Hey guys, it's Carlos, always trying to provide you with insight on technology and how it's affecting you and the world at large. This is a very important move, if only because it's never been done before. And frankly, many indicators point to the possibility of this having massive impact on the local economy in El Salvador and may even have major repercussions abroad as well. But to really understand why that is, let's get some context. So what is Bitcoin? Well, it's a little complicated, but Investopedia defines it as follows. Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency. There is no physical Bitcoin, only balances kept on a public ledger that everyone has transparent access to. All Bitcoin transactions are verified by massive amounts of computing power. Bitcoin is not issued or backed by any banks or governments, nor is an individual Bitcoin valuable as a commodity. It's also worth noting that Bitcoin is completely decentralized and uses a ledger-like system and technology called blockchain. Now that we know what Bitcoin is, let's understand legal tender. What is it? And what are its implications? Well, the tried and true Investopedia says, legal tender is anything recognized by law as a means to settle a public or private debt or meet a financial obligation, including tax payments, contracts, and legal fines or damages. As you can imagine, there are a variety of different potential effects for making a major financial move like this one. But because this is the first of its kind, economists can't agree on what those effects are actually going to be. So let's start with the proponents of this move. According to the president of El Salvador, roughly 70% of his country's populace lacks access to traditional financial services, making crypto a great way to empower residents to have a better control over their finances and can replace many of those services. Also, as of 2019, roughly 20% of their GDP came from money sent from abroad, totaling $6 billion, which in theory means that Bitcoin can provide a fast and affordable way to transfer money internationally without having to worry about things like taxes, fees, and potential tracking from shady third-party organizations. To quote the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, when talking about Bitcoin, it will bring financial inclusion, investment, tourism, innovation, and economic development for our country. Critics, on the other hand, have some major issues with this move. Top on that list is the volatility of Bitcoin itself. While throughout 2020, the value of Bitcoin has multiplied several fold, recent regulatory changes have caused its value to drop precipitously by over 30% compared to its all-time high just a few months ago. And that sort of volatility is horrible for businesses and the economy as a whole. To make things worse, this move seems to have jeopardized some international negotiations from El Salvador. For example, its effort to seek a $1 billion program from the International Monetary Fund may be in doubt. But the fear is that this is just the beginning. The World Bank also rejected El Salvador's request for help on its Bitcoin implementation. So the question is, how else can this cripple the government going forward? Regardless of whether you agree or disagree with making Bitcoin legal tender, the fact of the matter is that it's gaining steam and not just in El Salvador. Politicians from throughout Latin America have expressed their support for El Salvador's actions. Politicians from countries like Argentina, Paraguay, Brazil, and Panama, many of which have stated that they will be introducing legislation to make Bitcoin legal tender in their respective countries as well. So it appears like El Salvador is only gonna be the tip of the iceberg, and frankly, it shouldn't be a surprise. The reality is that Latin America has been plagued with economic and political catastrophe, as well as the horrendous repercussions of them, like skyrocketing inflation, deflation, and a crippling lack of financial institutions and services present. 
So it's no wonder that these countries will search for an answer in what at least in theory is supposed to be a currency completely independent from government or financial interests. Unfortunately, that's not true, at least not in practice. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general are not completely independent from government. Yes, they were built to not be tracked, and they do a very good job at that, but government regulation and the enforcement of said regulation have an immediate, tangible effect on cryptos. For example, the SEC in the United States has decided they want to regulate altcoins, cryptocurrencies that are not the major ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum, like securities, leading to a major drop in Bitcoin prices. Or China deciding to ban Bitcoin from their entire financial industry, prompting a drop in Bitcoin prices of almost $10,000. And when the FBI got access to a hacker's Bitcoin stash, it also dropped the price of Bitcoin. Governments around the world have money, resources, and power, and they will use it to regulate their countries how they see fit. And at least as of right now, cryptos are not exempt from that. El Salvador's move is interesting, without a doubt, and I'm definitely curious on how this is going to affect them in the long term. So I guess I'm supportive of the move, if only to see a real world testing ground for Bitcoin as an effective national currency. That said, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the godsend that many of the proponents paint it as. Yes, there is a very good chance that this is going to help the lives of many people across the country. But it by no means is completely independent from foreign influence, which may lead to some major negative implications down the road. So there goes another video. Thanks guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please hit that like button. It really does help. Also comment down below with your thoughts on Bitcoin, crypto, and what country you think will be next to make Bitcoin legal tender. Again, this is Carlos from Techonomics. Over and out.